Hello learners, my name is Savita Sagar. Today we are going to talk about socio-cultural context of learning. Socio-cultural context, we will start this with the definition of it. Socio-cultural is a framework that emphasizes the responsibilities of social and cultural context in human learning. It is a mixture of interaction of social and cultural element, having different cultures, and respect to each other differences. How it's linked with the child or how it influence to the child. Culture. Culture influence by giving the values. We have the beliefs related to culture and traditions. Social interaction. Social interaction we do with the parents, siblings, peers and teachers. Same with the language and communication. Social cultural theory emphasizes on the socio-cultural forces, the situation of a child's development and learning. It also includes the crucial role played by the parents, teachers, peers and the community in which the interaction occurring between children and their environment. And mediation, if we talk about mediation, that is human and symbolic intermediaries between the learner and the material to be learned. Psychological tools, symbolic system internalized by learners to become their inner cognitive tools. Now, in learner-centered pedagogy, importance is given to children's experiences, their voices and their active participation in the learning and teaching process. Now, we have two situations. How we have to inculcate these social culture aspects to a child? And what do you think of the, this? Now first, should we treat the children in the classroom like an object devoid of any prior experiences or treat him or her like any other human being with having a lot of experience and a frame of mind shaped by the socio-economic cultural conditions of the family and the community. Now another one is, or should we just for the contents without considering the relevance and meaningfulness for the child learner? Or should we facilitate the child to shape their own learning by constructing and reconstructing their vast experiences? Already acquired against the constraint they faced in their life, situations like in socioeconomic adversities and cultural taboos. Now the answer comes for these questions will determine the course of action that you as a teacher into the classroom's transactions. We know learning is active and social in character. It must hence be based on the children's local context and experiences where you have to relate your knowledge, your examples within the child context. You should talk within their own context or their vicinity or their environment. Now the next is the teaching. The teaching learning process must respond to physical, social and cultural preferences of the children. Consider the two classroom situation. Now we are going to talk about where the two teachers are using two different teaching process. So in the situation one, Mr. Raghu Mahanta a teacher in a primary school has to teach about the food to the students of class 4th. He entered the classroom quite well prepared with notes made in a consultation with the textbook and other references material. He was very serious and without any first started teaching. He told about the need of food for living, gave several examples of different type of foods and using adequate teaching learning materials elaborated how different food materials are procured, stored and used. In between, he supervised the class notes of the students and gave some home tasks. At the end of his class, he asked some questions and directed a few who raised their hand to response. A few students we are talking about. As a whole, he engaged the class with a lot of dictation, elaboration and explanation. But focusing only, his attention is only for the few students who seems to be 
active. So this is the one of the teaching method. Now we are going to talk about the another situation with the another teacher example. In that situation, Miss Anita, the teacher in the another primary school also has to teach the same topic food to the same class. She entered the class, talked with the student informally like how do you feel today? What have you taken in your lunch? What are the material you used to prepare food items? Where were the food material procured from? Who prepared lunch for you? And etc. Then she asked the student to make a list of food they take every day. When the students gave the names of foods one by one, she wrote these down on the blackboard. And then she asked, why do you take food? The student sat silently for a while and started talking. We take food to live. We get energy from food. So many answers came from the students. What do you think? Now, Miss Anita did was that she inspired each child to participate. Then she wrote a question on the blackboard. What will happen if we do not take food? Everybody wrote their own answers in their notebook. At that time, Miss Anita supervised the students' work, gave clue for answer and also corrected the answer where needed. She also asked the students to state their answers and wrote the same on the blackboard. Now, comparing both the situations, the above situation of the teaching learning method, now we have to just look behind and we have to think which one is the better. In the first situation, Mr. Mohanta focused on teaching the concept without considering the students' experiences related to the concept. He tried to discharge the knowledge of the concept into the minds of the children. He was concentrating on a few active students and didn't seem to take care of the other students who remained mostly inactive. It is rather a teacher-centric approach. It is not a child-friendly approach, if I would say. On the other hand, in the second situation, Miss Anita tried to involve the students by consistently considering the experiences of the students while facilitating their learning. It is evident that the questions she posed before students that she was always conscious of local context of students and didn't try to impose any knowledge on the students. So in both the situation, we found that one teacher is trying to talk with the children about their context, about their family, about their society. Each of us have a different culture different food habits and we also carry different foods in lunch. So teacher is asking from each of the student about their food. So now they are getting the knowledge from different different families that what are the food habits they are having, what kind of foods they are preparing in lunch. In another situation, the child, the teacher was just talking or imposing their knowledge on the children and not even interested in the children who are kept quietly but they are that doesn't mean that they do not know anything but teacher was not interested in that that's talk about the socio-cultural aspects that how a child understand their own society their own culture when the learning is related to the experiences of student the context in which they are placed when it is a product of students thinking, when it is self-directed, when the student does something with his or her learning experiences, it became meaningful. Yes, when the child learns things from their environment, when the child learns things from the observation of their own family rituals, and when they, these learnings happen, that time it is meaningful for them. Social cultural context of meaningful learnings, according to the National Curriculum Framework of 2005, the child community and local environment from the primary context 
in which learning take place and in which knowledge acquire its significance. It is in interaction with the environment that the child construct knowledge and drives meaning. We cannot afford to neglect the conditions of family, locality and community in which the child is born brought up for the two following essential reason. One, the local environment provides facilitating condition to child to acquire immense experiences and second, the constraints for education are created due to socio-economic and cultural practices and beliefs of the family and the community. Like many community, if we talk about the socio-economic, if I give you the example on that, many uh, in many families, people do not promote girls' education just because they are not socio-economically well. So they just want to give education to their boys only. Now, facilitating conditions. Children gather variety of experiences from the interaction with their sociocultural environment. They learn from the tree around them, from the animal and the bird they have seen, friends they have played with, family members with whom they live and so many. That means their mind is not a clean slate when they are enter to school. Basing on these experience, we have to enhance their learning by linking their existing experiences with new knowledge given in the textbook. Let us understand how meaningful learning takes place. Now see this diagram. We have here, you can see the terms drawn on a circle, food, agriculture and disease. When a child learns about food, he or she links the concept food with his experiences on types of foods he or she eats every day, process of food preparation which their mother do in their family or the caretaker. He or she also linked with the language agriculture health, disease, etc. Here, the brain store these experiences together and when one concept is recalled, the other concepts are recalled simultaneously with his experiences. In other words, recalling the concept of food activate the child's mind or child's brain for the other concepts of to be linked. Like, if a child is talking about suppose roti, that is prepared by wheat, so the child will also inquire where the wheat come from. So then the child go back to the agriculture form and just see the whole process of agriculture of the food uh, wheat preparation, how the wheat is cultivated and then prepared and then it turns into the flour form and after that we prepare the roti. So it is linked together. And once the child is talking about the roti, then child is talking about the wheat, the process of preparing the flour and the, how wheat is cultivated in the farm. So they are talking about even agriculture. In this case, the child learning is meaningful because child get a chance to use all his or her experiences acquired through the continuous interaction with the immediate environment if they are suppose coming from a farmer family, so they are very much aware of that. In that sense, the local environment provides facilitating context for learning too. Now the constraints of conditioning. The social, economic and cultural conditions prevailing in a community also create hindrance for the education of children. There are communities with affluent conditions who have extreme conservative notions for education of the girl child. One is that it you can say consider that ki many families do not want to promote girl child education or in their family there is it's like their uh, you can say it is something which is coming uh, continuously they are having the orthodox family who do not believe in that ki they, their girls should be educated. 
Sometimes they have the stereotypical differences also. Sometimes they have the gender discrimination also in their family. Lots of things come here. The another one is the extreme form of poverty force says families to engage their children in earning livelihood rather than sending them to schools. Yes, that is true that in India many families cannot afford the education of the children due to their many socio-economic reasons or sometimes they have the problems for their livelihood the children has to earn for their family there are lots of reasons for that similarly due to social and religious taboos some communities do not like to send their girl children to co-education schools to study along with boys because they believe that if girls go to the boys to their school they may not follow their rituals they may can harm their own so-called societal image in some societies where the caste system is still rigidly followed the families of so-called upper caste do not prefer their children to sit or interact with those from the Dalit families or who are still considered untouchable in several regions of our country. Yes, that is also another reality of society that after so many years of the independence, this untouchability still followed in some places in India. Now, another one is the tribal children. Notwithstanding their rich and diverse cultural heritage are looked down upon for their assimil poverty and difficulty in communication because of language. Yes, because most of the tribal children just only aware of their own tribal language and the difficulty they found in outside their own vicinity or you can say outside their own tribal area that they are not able to communicate with anybody else because their language is not prevalent all over. So these are the, such a list of constraints which is endless and which affect a child in this child's learning, meaningful learning in a socio-cultural aspect. However, here are some suggestions for the facilitating meaningful learning taking into the consideration the socio-cultural context of the child, like for example, use of child's knowledge as a base for learning. Suppose you have to teach source of water. So, if you see the textbooks tells about the dug wells, two wells, rivers are the different source of water. In your areas, the people have not seen any of these sources of water. Specifically, if they are living in a cities, they have seen ponds, streams, jeels or canal, etc. So you have to start your lesson with these sources of water. May it can be possible that they may or may have not seen these things. But you can even start your discussion with what are the sources of water they have seen. So it's like that first you, you can inquire from the children about the sources of water and then you can even show the uh, different kind of uh, these sources, uh, diagrams, pictures, videos nowadays we have so much of media that from there the water is coming from what are the different sources of water so that now we can use uh, media also to teach these concept now another thing we can make the classroom situation very contractualized whenever you are in a classroom or whatever you are teaching give the examples from their local from the local means that the examples which are coming from the child's own vicinity. You cannot give an example to a rural child from the urban setting. Otherwise, child would not understand because child do not have any idea of urban settings. 
and it's with the same with a whiz you cannot give examples of any rural settings to a urban settings to teach the any concept now environment tells local stories you must have known about the teaching learning methods from their own localities gather students knowledge share with them in local language and dialect if you do this your classroom as a teacher you will found that it's very much happen with the activities and will be a meaningful for a student the child would relate himself with the classroom and also the child will understand things in their own context social context also now use material available in your locality facilitate learning collect and prepare local specific material if you are teaching vegetation in geography collect the plants and names of the tree from their locality and start your teaching from local vegetation and also you can do for this for example you can take the children to their local farmers and you can see you can also take them for a nature walk so that they would also identify ki which tree is that how the local vegetation is happening so you can even arrange a one day trip as a nature walk with the children to teach about these concept and ensure students active participation students became active when they are involved in learning and teaching process so it is the responsibility of a teacher that she should ensure that each of the child is paying attention and also finding the class interested or the concept you are teaching and if the child is not doing that then it is also the responsibility of the teacher to just get to know that what is the reason behind that the child is not paying attention to the class if i'm citing the example by going beyond the textbooks would it work yes it would you can also give examples those were not coming from the textbooks but they are coming from their day to day life the child it is easier for a child to relate with that example if it's coming from their own day to day life experiences so a teacher should go or should cite the examples which are not coming from their textbook but sometimes they are coming from their the children's life experiences or their own families or you can say their society now and encourage children to ask questions and argue giving the scope to ask the question means that you are activating the students if you ask questions they will think on and about the concept to be taught and will argue when they argue they get scope to understand what they are telling so it is very important that as a teacher you should understand that as much as that you inquire the question from the children and as much as you allow them to argue their thinking level increase the clarity on concept will increase so as a teacher it is the responsibility it is your responsibility to promote the child for questioning and arguing in the class and for that you can have the class in a discussion mode as a teacher you should focus on learning as a process not learning as a outcome a teacher should never see this process as what is going to come out no because a teacher cannot be a dictator a teacher should take the class in a discussion mode she should understand that it is a process they should focus on how they are learning how the children are learning rather than what they have learnt so the teacher should not go to the absolute right or wrong they should go very slowly to the process of teaching whether it is a formal or informal the use of children's experiences bring out meaningful learnings for children unless children localize their day to day life experiences while earning a concept 
knowledge is reduced to mere information. We know that learning from the text is pointless unless it is connected with their context. So, a teacher should connect, make a connection between their learning and their experiences, specifically their day to day life experiences, so that the children can focus and also actively participate in this kind of learning teaching process and they can share their own experiences and sharpen their own concept introduced through the curriculum. Local knowledge and textbook knowledge. The knowledge information examples from different concepts given in the textbook is called textbook knowledge but child's community and the local environment forms the primary context in which learning takes place he she interact with the environment drive meanings and construct knowledge which became the base for the learning this is what we call local knowledge for the children where child himself or herself is experiencing the event and they are learning through that event. So, it is very important for a teacher to make a difference between the local knowledge and the textbook knowledge and try to balance between both and use textbook knowledge and relate it with the local knowledge so that it can easily inculcate to the children. This is not usually taken care in the of in preparation of textbooks and in learning teaching process when a textbook is prepared for the whole state because books are prepared not keeping in mind about one setting of community. No, it is prepared for the whole state. And if we take the example of Indian state, even in the state, the local knowledge of the people vary from after the 10 miles. So, it is difficult to bring the local knowledge of each area and community into the textbook. And it is also not possible to take into the account the varieties of our socio-cultural life. But children need to find examples of their own socio-cultural environment. Here the teacher play an important role because she know that how she has to contextualize this information from textbook knowledge to the local knowledge. Detailed reading of the textbook. Many a time teachers enter the class and they start teaching hardly have they refer to the textbook beforehand. As a result, they face problem to interpret the textbook knowledge into the context of the children's knowledge or children's learning. To contextualize the textbook knowledge for the student, a teacher have to read the textbook again and again so as to identify plug point to cite the local example. Other than this, I would like to say the teacher should also understand the local communities and should also go to the communities and observe them so that he can relate the textbook knowledge with the local knowledge and can generate examples for the classroom teaching. Finding the learning indicators from the textbook the activities given in the textbook serves as examples only and can help the teacher to find the learning indicators. When a teacher understands the purpose of these activities, he or she will get learning indicators. For example, in English textbook of class 5th, some speeches is in direct or indirect forms are given in a topic and the purpose is to make the child speak. A teacher can arrange a conversation between amongst the students to develop this indicator. 
and this can be done as a discussion form or even as a quiz form that the teacher can divide students into two group and then can have a discussion in on a based on storytelling or on a based on role play and they are allowed to use the direct speech and indirect speech an indicator refers to what the child does after learning a concept gathering then students knowledge on a different learning points yes this is also very important for a teacher to find the learning indicators where he or she has to gather relate local knowledge to fit in it she can get this knowledge from student or other teacher or other community people as i said a teacher should go to the local community to visit to the local community to understand or to just get a sense of their environment linking children's knowledge and experiences with the textbook knowledge when a teacher knows students experiences related to a concept he or she has to establish a link between students experiences and textbook knowledge for the purpose the teacher has to make note of students experiences of each learning indicators for example the concept of food preparation may be different in rural and tribal area so she could have the note of that she can inquire from the student about that preparing own text if needed alternative text many a time teacher a text may not be appropriate for the students so to make it meaningful for the students a teacher has to prepare alternative text taking students socio cultural context into account for example road accident is an urban phenomena but we cannot ask students from rural area or a tribal area to write a essay on road accident they may or may not have been any exposure of road accident in their life by relying only on the textbook and underestimating the experiences of children acquired from local sources and usually a teacher are creating two mistakes first they are encouraging rote learning because most of the textbooks experiences are not the context and not easily comprehensible for the children and second they are not discriminating children strong in rote memory getting the text by the heart in no time from those who rely heavily on their local experiences usually the former are given favorable recognition and later are labeled as the slow learner because the teacher is not using a good approach with the children so thus the disadvantage condition and disadvantage learner are sometimes created within the confines of the classroom thank you